Hey, in this video, let's take a look and see what it would take to quickly generate or create a, a maze that is relatively low poly. Like this one, uh, this test that I'm doing here is uh, only 1700 uh, tries. And of course you can control the uh, resolution and make it high res if you needed to. But if you wanted to create a low poly game asset, or an environment, uh, this is a really cool technique to generate uh, uh, quickly. So let me uh, show you how uh, I did this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a new scene. And um, the thing that I'm gonna be using, the tool that I'm gonna be using is in my poly modeling right here in Maya, and it's this SVG button. So to create an SVG shape, uh, as you know, this is a vector uh, shape. You can use either Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Animate or I, I think there's many many different tools that you can uh, use to create the SVG vector shapes. So uh, for this tutorial I'm gonna jump into Adobe Animate and let me show you uh, the shape that I used to create the uh, orange maze uh, that you saw. So this is the shape that I used for the uh, orange maze. Let me start over and show you how uh, I did this. All right, so once you create a new document, in my case, I set my uh, size to uh, 2048 by 2048. So this is a 2K um, image, right? And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my uh, shapes here, grab something like the oval tool. And on the right in the properties, what I wanna do is I wanna change the uh, fill color to say uh, none by clicking this button here. And in the uh, stroke, I'm gonna leave my stroke uh, color black, that's fine. And the stroke size, uh, let's set it to something like, I don't know, 65, right? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on the Alt and the Shift key and just drag out a circle on my 2K um, image, right? Next, I'm going to grab this tool here and double click on my shape. I'm gonna press Control K to have the align tool show up and i'm going to align it to the uh, center using these two buttons here okay so once my uh, circle is perfectly aligned and uh, if you wanted to you could double click on this line and actually change the stroke size to any size you want so maybe you want your mace to be thinner or thicker again i think i'm going to go with something like uh, 60 i think that's pretty good and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create some lines inside the maze that are going to be uh, used for, you know, for the walls, right? So don't worry about if you, I'm not sure what app you're using, but if you're using Adobe Animate, you don't have to worry about uh, these shapes been, being clean um, because you can draw a line, hold on the shift key, make sure it's straight. And then what you can do is you can grab this tool, the selection tool, and just select the part of the line that you don't want and just press delete. So it will automatically create very clean uh, shapes, right? So let's go ahead and just, I'm gonna assume you're using uh, the same program. If you're doing this in Adobe Illustrate or something like that, just quickly create some kind of a maze that uh, makes you know some sense, right? So maybe right here, I'm just gonna casually uh, randomly create this. So let's say this was the entrance. Maybe the person uh, walks in, then they see something like this. We'll create a bunch of different. Um, I'm not really thinking this through. This is just a demo, obviously, right? So let's say I have something like this. And the next thing that I need to do, at least again, if I'm using Adobe Animate, is I don't want any of these uh, round shapes because when in Maya, I'm gonna turn this into uh, low poly geometry or just even clean geometry. Uh, in my case, I don't really, I'm not really interested in any round shapes. So, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this dot here in the timeline, which is gonna select everything. And then I'm gonna go to modify and go to shape and I'm gonna do convert lines to fills so as soon as I do this it looks like nothing happened but now what I could do is I can select the tops of all of these lines and just clean them up I just can simply delete 
uh, all this round stuff that I'm not interested in, right? So just very quickly, I'm gonna go around, delete them. Uh, another thing I could do is if I wanted to, I can create little entrances, you know, uh, just try to think through what type of uh, layout you would want in your maze, or maybe use another one as a reference, whatever your technique is, uh, just clean this up so it looks nice and clean. All right, so now I'm ready to export this as a SVG file. So I'm gonna click on this again, the whole thing is selected. I'm gonna go to File, Export, and in order for me to export this as SVG format, I do need to go to uh, Export Image Legacy Mode. All right, and then I'm gonna uh, simply save my file as uh, maze.svg. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And I'm going to say embed and flatten my groups, that's fine. I'm not sure this uh, really matters. I'm gonna say okay. And now I'm gonna jump back into uh, Maya. All right, here I am in Maya. I'm gonna click on my SVG button. So when I do, I have this uh, really cool looking uh, shape that shows up. And it's essentially letting me know that, hey, uh, let's go ahead and import something. So if you go into your attribute editor and find the SVG tab, you can see um, up here that there's a couple different options. You can paste your SVG in or you can import it in. So I'm going to import mine. All right. So once you find it, you can see a little preview that shows up. I'm going to say open. And as, as soon as I press open, there it is. It just shows up in my uh, viewport, right? And before we play with any of these settings, let's go ahead and maybe position it a little better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on the center pivot, and then I'm gonna press the J button and snap this uh, 90 degrees. And the next, next thing I would like to do is I'm gonna press spacebar to go into my quad view and just maybe, uh, let's go ahead and lower this. And in the top view, if I hold on the X button, I can snap it to the center. Uh, hovering over this viewport, I can press spacebar to go into this perspective uh, view. And there it is. So here's our very quickly generated uh, maze so far, right? The next thing I could do is maybe make it larger. And let's start playing around with this. So the very first thing you, you want to do when you go into the SVG tab is I strongly suggest uh, uh, deselecting something called output vertex color. The reason you want to deselect this is because it is currently bringing the color from your uh, vector program. Uh, so in our case, I set it to black. So that's what this is. If I uncheck this now, I can use Maya to control the material in the color of this uh, shape. And that is what I want, right? I want the control inside Maya to create textures or whatever the case might be. The uh, next thing we can do is we have uh, an extrusion uh, tab and in here you could control the height of your maze, which is really neat. You can also add the divisions and the divisions are cool because maybe you want to sculpt some specific detail uh, in your um, mesh. But keep in mind, again, I'm not sure what your case might be, but usually uh, when I uh, model game assets, I want to make sure that my faces and my tries stay very low, right? Especially if it's a mobile game asset or whatever uh, the case might be. So uh, you have the uh, extra divisions. You also have a bevel, which is really neat because you can turn that on. And then down here you have a bevel profile, which will allow you to change the distance of your bevel. So you can kind of concave it in or bevel it out, make it a little more bubbly, whatever the uh, whatever your preference is. You can also change the offset of the bevel. And of course, you can change the resolution of the bevel as well. So in my case, uh, again, I kind of, uh, you know, would like to keep it low poly. So I'm going to go with something like this. And as soon as you are done and you're happy with these settings, the next thing you want to do is just simply, uh, you know, select your shape and clear your history. As soon as you clear your history, you will see that all of this will go away because essentially you're just baking the shape in. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the history and you can see that now this is just normal geometry like we have in Maya. And, you know, I could do things to it as I would with any other, uh, you know, mesh, right? So that was really cool. 
Uh, I'm gonna turn on this button here to show me the wireframe unshaded. And one of the things that you might wanna do is you could select this uh, mesh and go to uh, mesh cleanup and let's look at the options. In here you have something called uh, faces with more than four sides, right? Fixed by tessellation. So I'm gonna leave the cleanup on and I'm gonna leave the concave uh, button on and I'm just gonna say apply and look what happens to my shape. As soon as I press apply and close, you can see that uh, any, any sides that had more than four uh, sides now turn into tries, right? And this is really good practice uh, that you um, want to do in order to create a uh, you know a nice clean game ready uh, mesh. If you're going to submit this somewhere or send it to somebody, the you know you want to make sure that your geometry kind of supports all the latest game engines, right? So turning into uh, tries is a good idea. All right, so here we are. So again, uh, next thing I could do, of course, is I, I can apply a uh, material to this i can come in here i can control my color maybe i want to make it uh, last time it was orange let's go with maybe like a blue so now we have a blue one all right so keep this in mind this is a very powerful technique to use vector shapes to quickly generate um, larger environments including uh, mazes or buildings or anything else right all right, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.